Right, it's a few days before Bristol Half Marathon, so I thought I'd talk you through what I'm bringing with me, because it might help you. So this is like the second big half marathon I've done. Um, I did Bath Half a few years ago, and Bristol, yeah, Bristol is the first one I've done in a long while, so it's been a good few years. So I thought I'd take you through what I'm packing with me. I've got a few different categories, roughly, I'm gonna take you through like the day as and when I'll need stuff. All right, so the first thing I'm like, well, what we're packing it all in is the bag. So let me get that bag. Okay, I've come with just, you know, it's just a bag. <laughs> Technically, it's a panty rack but we're gonna call it a bag for today because I know it's quite big, um, but it's not too big. And also I don't really care for this bag too much. So when it goes into the luggage bus, I think they're calling them, it doesn't really matter if it gets bashed about or anything because I don't care too much for it. And on that bag, I'm gonna need my little baggage label. So I've got bits to fill out on the front and then yeah, that will tell people it's mine and that only I can claim it again. I'm going to attach it with a little hairband. Let's do that now, shall we? That's popped on. So there we go. Bag and luggage tag all collected. Okay, the next thing that will be going in is my breakfast. Um, I've been kind of training my long runs, so I've had a Huel um, in the morning, um, which is basically just like a, a liquid drink um that's about 400 calories um and then i've been going out about an hour later so this should be all i kind of really need fuel wise beforehand the race starts at like 10 30 so it's definitely one that i'm going to need breakfast for and i'm also going via a coach and the coach is leaving about 6 a.m so therefore breakfast on the coach this is nice and portable it's also what i've been training with so nothing new for race day so that's going I'm also gonna pack a little cup because the start line, like the start area, doesn't have any drinks, so there won't be any bottled water or anything. So what I thought is I could bring a little cup, pop some of my water in it, carry this around, and then when it comes to starting the race, I could just scrunch this up, pop it inside a pocket or my running bag, and then just run with it. That is all of my kind of pre-run stuff that I might need in the morning. Obviously, you're gonna be wearing clothes, things like that pretty much probably the clothes I'm going to show you is what I'll be wearing um, so they won't necessarily go in the bag but it's good to have them so next thing that we need is run stuff so these again like I said I probably have them these on but it's worth just checking that they're all washed and they're ready to go so let me put this bag to the side first thing is the clothes that you're going to wear so I'm going to wear some little shorts they're about oh, they're bike shorts but they're not quite super bike shorts uh, they've got a couple of pockets in them on the sides been wearing them nothing they've not given me any issues they've not really got a waistband so there's nothing to chafe around your waist and then they go down quite far so your thighs aren't rubbing so that's quite nice they're just from fabletics then i've got my club t-shirt this will be what i'm wearing so bright orange t-shirt you know everyone's favorite color for a race but you know these people will see me then to go with that race number so i've got mine i've not actually been able to get it up on the tracking app just yet um they've also helpfully filled in quite a lot of the details on the back um but there are a few more that i need to fill in myself and the, it, it tells you when your start is so when to be in your areas so it tells me on the back that the assembly opens at 9.30 for me to go in, then the warm-up starts at 10.20 and then the start time is 10.50. So quite a long little wait if you get there for 9.30 and then make sure to remember safety pins. Quite a lot of races where you pick up the number they'll have safety pins there but if they send it out to you just remember to bring some. Probably pop it on before I put the t-shirt on because then it's nice and flat. Uh, it's a lot easier to put race numbers on before you put the t-shirt on, you know, because it's, it's just a mess, all right? I've got my running socks. I'm not actually completely 
sure what running socks I'll be wearing. Um, I'll show you when a swap. I'll show you now. <laughs> These are the running shoes that I'm going to be running in. And basically, whilst I like them, they do tend to give me a blister on my right foot. And I've not quite worked out the situation of socks and shoes to make it possible that they don't give me a blister. So I think I'm just going to have to roll with it, get a blister and deal with it. <laughs> it's not like a major blister. It's just... It's just where my toes are rubbing slightly. So I don't, it's potentially just because the toe box is too narrow and that's forcing them to rub against each other. But like I said, I'm just wearing running socks that I've trained in. These aren't necessarily the best socks for these shoes, but they're what I have. So that's what I'll be wearing. Next up, I'm packing my little running visor, mainly because it just helps my hair stay off my face. But also if it is sunny, I think it said it's going to be like 16 degrees, so not too sunny or hot. Um, but it also keeps the rain off if it does start raining, because you never know about British weather. It changes all the time. I've also specifically made sure that I've got a sports bra that I've been training in. So I know I've got one that doesn't chafe or rub, that's ready to go. Um, I've got a few of these in a few different colours, but again, it's just a Fabletics one. It's actually the Oasis sports bra. Um, it is kind of more decorative than supportive, so if you need lots of support, this probably isn't the right one. Again, just training these things so you know what's going to happen. I know that I don't get chafed under my armpits in this one. I know that the band around the rib cage isn't too tight after a while. And then to put some of my items in, I will be wearing a little running backpack. This is just a, like a five litre one from the Cathlon. It's actually quite old now, the zip's broken. So I might need to swap that out very quickly so it can have a working zip. And this is mainly just because I just carry quite a lot of stuff. Like I don't think you need it for a half marathon. Like you'll probably want it for an, like a marathon or an ultra but a road half marathon where it's quite supported, you probably don't need a backpack. You might want a waistband or just something smaller, but this is quite excessive and I am <laughs> acknowledging that. I just, I'm gonna wear it <laughs> so I can look stupid. All right, and in that will be like that cup I've crushed up. It will have my phone, it will have bits and pieces really that I don't necessarily want to leave in my bag in the luggage bus and again, been training in it, no it's comfy, no it doesn't give me any issues, so that's what I'll be doing. So let's go through a couple of the things that will be in there for the run. First thing, I'm going to bring a little Lara bar. Um, I do kind of prefer just normal foods as opposed to like running specific foods when I'm out running. I just feel my body digests them a, lot, a little bit easier than anything else. But then I will be bringing just a bit, this is actually half a gel, so the other half I used in my longest run, just so I've got something that I know, oh, that'll give me some energy if I definitely need it. Um, I go for the non-caffeine one, so it's literally just isotonic, give you a little bit of sugar, and you're good to go. This is cherry flavour. Yeah, not much to say about that. I just don't really need a full one. So I've got half of it left over from my longest training run, so that'll come with me just in case I need it. Right, so let's talk tech. I'll be bringing my running watch. It's already on my wrist. There's not much to do about that. I'll click it. I'll put it on to running. There is an option for you to be able to like kind of have an avatar that you're kind of running against. So I could say, oh, I want to run a half marathon in this time. And it will kind of pace you there and it will tell you if you're ahead or if you're behind and how much you need to catch up with, which I might use. I'm not convinced I will yet. Uh, because my wave doesn't quite have the right pacer for me, which means I'm going to be lost in a sea of people, not really knowing my time, which is like, great news. Uh, but hopefully I can get through that and just run my own race. And that's it. I will be bringing headphones. These are bone conducting ones. I haven't actually trained in these, which sounds awful, um, because I've just switched over to like AirPods. But for races, you can't use like things that cover your ears. Like these ones are fine, they do take a bit of getting used to. Um, so I'm only bringing these because I know what they feel like, but they do literally just like vibrate your ear. Um, so it can feel a bit weird to start. 
and this was just to accompany me might just have a podcast playing nothing too much there's entertainment on the route already so i think there's a few bands playing and bits and pieces so there's going to be atmosphere i just know that potentially just having some something talking and just being around um, might get me in the zone a little bit more than random snippets of music that i may or may not like uh, but that's me <laughs> i'm sure everybody has their own playlist and things that they like to listen to um, so yeah maybe if you're doing lots of racing you might want to get some of these um, i don't think they were too expensive but they are just kind of another thing that you don't really need um because like i said they are supported with music and things like that uh, another thing gonna bring my phone um don't really need to bring it on the run but i don't want to leave it in the luggage thing um, it also allowed me to buy things afterwards with my cards and stuff that are on it so that's always useful and then also I can you know text people as soon as I've finished they're like oh done didn't maybe I didn't get the time maybe I did get the time I can let them know how I got on and that I'm finished if it can stop you know thinking about terrible things that might have happened next up I will probably bring this camera maybe so this is a little gopro it's gopro 8 um i've still not worked out proper settings for it or anything but yeah i thought maybe i'll try <laughs> i'm not the most consistent on this channel right so after the race you finish you may or may not be cold from all the rain and you're just ready to kind of go home well my coach isn't leaving until about 3 p.m so i have got a change of clothes just to bung over the top of my running clothes might get changed into it if there is a changing area uh, just so i'm not in sweaty clothes but we'll see um so in my little post running pack there is some nice warm socks some little sliders tracksuit bottoms really jogging bottoms then i've got a nice warm jumper to put on as well so i can just be nice and warm and have normal clothes on i'm also bringing a nice water bottle this will have some cold water in it and because it's a little an insulated bottle it will keep cool for longer so then i can have some nice cold water opted not to really bring a water bottle whilst i'm running because i think i should be able to do the half marathon without anything and if i don't there is there's three water stops and then after the run i've also got a little protein it's literally just like a protein brownie uh bounty it's just convenient again any food you've got just shove it in so you've got something so you don't go ravenous and i don't know just purchase everything <laughs> which brings us to all the little misc things that you probably don't necessarily need but that i'm bringing anyway regardless so the first thing is i'm actually bringing my bike and my bike lock I'm not taking them with me to the mar half marathon, but I need them to get to the coach stop. Um, so whatever transport you're using, uh, just make sure it's actually working. So if you're getting public transport down to a race, check the timetables, because they do sometimes change, especially if they've got road closures in and around the city centers. So check how you get in there, when you need to leave, what you need for that. So for my transport, I need my bike to get across to the car park where I'm being picked up, lock to lock up my bike for the day. So then I need the coach. <laughs> so the coach is then going to take us to Bristol and then it's also going to take us back down to Exeter afterwards. Following on from that, I've got some hand sanitizer. This is just going to be shoved in my bag, probably won't use it. I've got a spare hairband because you never know when you might need it. So we'll see. I'm going to shove deodorant in there. Probably won't mask anything from the run, but if I want it, it's there. I'm also picking up just a £5 note. Then I have backup money to buy me a sandwich for lunch. Also, I'm going to be bringing a book for the coach ride. Um, I mean, just to calm, calm yourself down. I am pretty good at reading in vehicles, so that doesn't make me feel sick. So therefore, it's an ideal thing to do on the coach. That is my list of things that I'm taking to the half marathon. They won't all be in my bag. Like I said, I'll probably have my running clothes on and my warm clothes on to start the day. Warm clothes will go in the bag whilst I'm running and then they'll get put back on afterwards. Uh, but it's just good to see what you need and then know if anything needs washing beforehand. I hope you guys have all got 
are all ready. If you're running a Bristol half, like, let me know. And let me know what your estimated finish time is. I'm not, I'm like, I'm kind of excited, but I'm also just happy to go along, do the run, and hope for the best. Hope your runs go well. If you've got any events coming up soon, I hope this helps you and gives you an idea of what to bring with you. But yeah, check out whether your race has um, aid stations, what they've got at their aid stations. So from what I can tell, Bristol doesn't have any gels or food at their stops. There is just water. So obviously, if you're someone that knows you need energy and you need, um, you need gels here and here, like 10 miles, I don't know, then knowing that there isn't one is a good thing and it also means that you can then bring what you want. Bring stuff that you've run in. Don't bring anything new. Don't suddenly wear a nice new shiny pair of like leggings or a t-shirt because you never know, it might give you chafing. Have a good run everyone!